Hello and welcome to Team Hypercube's Quick Play, the series where we quickly run you through the rules so you spend less time reading the rulebook and more time playing the game. Today we are playing Betrayal at House on the Hill, published by Avalon Hill and Wizards of the Coast. In this game, three to six adventurers are exploring an old, creepy, haunted house. But eventually, one of them is going to succumb to the evil charms of the house and become the traitor, at which point he is separated from the other players who become the heroes, and they have to fight for survival as the traitor tries to destroy them. Every game of Betrayal is different because you're going to build your own house each time. So you're going to have a stack of room tiles, each of which could be on the top, middle, or bottom floor. In addition, each hero will have its own disc which has four different statistics on it, two of which are physical and two of which are mental. And finally, you have the omen tracker and dice. You also have three rule books, two of which read, do not read. I shouldn't have to tell you this, but don't read them. Those two have hidden information about your game that you can only read once you reach the point of the haunt. The other one you can read because that's just the rules. First, pick your hero and set a marker on each of the starting values of that character's stats. You'll encounter things throughout the game that will move your character's stats up or down. If they reach the skull, that means your character has died. Note that this can only happen after the haunt has been revealed. If the character dies before the haunt is revealed, that character is simply teleported back to the front door with its lethal stat set to its minimum value. You begin play with everybody inside the front door. You also have the upper landing and the basement landing. Note that the staircase does go up to the upper landing, but there's no way to get into the basement landing yet. First, you have to discover rooms. So you can move up to your speed in squares. When you go through a door, you simply draw a tile from a stack of tiles and place it on the board. Make sure first that the back of the tile indicates the floor that you're actually on. Some rooms could be on any of the three floors of the house, and some could only be on one or two. So make sure that yours is in a legal spot. Note also that going up the stairs does count as a move. Now you can keep moving up to your speed, but as soon as you enter a room that has an item, omen, or event symbol on it, you stop. You draw an omen, item, or event card. Follow the instructions on that card. They're usually pretty straightforward. Then your turn ends. Now if you draw an omen card, that means something especially terrifying has just taken place. It's an omen of the upcoming haunt. The first thing that you do is move the omen counter up. One. Then you roll six dice. Those six dice have to equal or beat the number on that omen counter, otherwise the haunt begins. Continue moving in this way, taking turns, drawing events, items, and omens, until such time as someone fails to beat the omen counter with their haunt roll. Now you may open the survivor's guide that says do not read, look at the front chart, compare the omen that you just drew to the room in which you drew it, and find the intersection on that chart. That's the number of the haunt that you are in. Usually, but not always, the person who failed the haunt roll will become the traitor. Determine who the traitor is. That person leaves with the traitor's handbook, reads the corresponding haunt in their handbook separately from the heroes. Now, each haunt is very, very unique, so all bets are kind of off in terms of the rules. You'll have to read the actual rules in that haunt to see what changes. For combat, the two opponents roll opposing might rolls. Roll a number of die equal to your might score, and compare that total to your opponent's total. Whoever rolls the highest has won the fight and inflicts the difference in physical damage to the other combatant. Haunts can sometimes introduce monsters to the game. In addition to being really, really scary, they also slow players' movement. For each monster in a square, it slows your movement by one. You can always move at least one space as a hero. Usually, if you defeat a monster in battle, they they are not dead, they are merely stunned. You flip them over to their stunned side, they no longer slow progress of heroes, and they miss their next turn. Your hero takes normal damage, and after the haunt, they can die for real. You drop any items in the room where you die, and any hero can then go pick those items up. This includes any companions that you may have. Now the victory conditions are also always different. Sometimes you must escape the house, sometimes you must defeat the monsters. The traitor is usually just trying to kill the heroes. So good luck, and here's hoping that you survive your betrayal at House on the Hill. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't really into it either.